What's up guys, it's been a few days off, there was actually supposed to be a video yesterday but I fucked up the recording and it didn't happen, not the first time and not the last time it's gonna happen but it kind of sucks but anyway we're gonna continue with the live arena grind again today, too bad you didn't see yesterday's video because I was actually only fighting like god accounts and I was doing well, oh I forgot that I... <laughs> I took some gear for my um, Wukong for Hydra. I wonder if I can remember the build because you kind of need a very... I mean, for Tranda. You kind of need a very weird build on Eva since she doesn't need full crit rate. But anyway, I did super well yesterday. Sadly, it's not on the video. I gained a lot of points and I was like... It wasn't just that I was winning, but I was only winning against like the guard accounts that I really shouldn't um, honestly win against at all, which was kind of surprising. But there's also a lot of um, lot of things to talk about today because uh, I didn't make a lot of videos about the recent events. But uh, let me quickly find the right the right set, and then then we can focus on the fights and all the raid news and so on. But yeah, people have been asking me what's going on, I just kind of uh, went MIA for a couple of days, but I'm fine. Uh, no, not the Wukong piece. I kind of pride myself in the fact that I usually remember all of my sets on purpose, but I do have a lot of gear right now, to be honest, and there's multiple Okay, that must be it. Okay, it's this, is, yeah. There's kind of many sets that I use on different champions and something like 85 crit rate. Build is a bit different, so I can't keep track of everything, but... I have... Like, um... I have still a relatively small amount of the top gear. Of course, I have tons of gear, but the really good gear is only a small amount, so I mostly remember it out of the top of my head anyway, but... Can you see it on the battle log? I don't know if you can see the full picture of it, but... Yeah, we were pretty much just fighting guard accounts and... Winning against... Um, well, I mean, we're... Um, it's not like I was winning every fight, but... I was gaining a lot of points, and... There were some really, really tough enemies that I faced. Anyway, let's see how we go today. The first thing that I want to talk about, which I honestly should have made a video, but I was just too... I, did, I couldn't make any videos on weekend, but um, so Plarium finally announced that they are reworking Iron Twins, Phantom Shogun and Sand Devil. It's something that uh, everybody I think has been asking for. I have talked about it on many videos. I think I even made a video specifically about the fact that how those three bosses are different than the old ones like Doom Tower and I felt they were better designed. And I have also specifically brought up that topic about those three bosses compared to the old ones in the content creators chat many times I have directly tried to make them change it I'm not saying that they did it because of me most certainly not but um, I think it, it's so universally recognized issue that uh, I mean many people independently talked about it and I think um, I guess we finally got through to them well it remains to be seen what they actually do about the bosses, of course, since we just heard that they're doing something about them and not the specifics. But I'm assuming that since they are doing something about them, then it's... and announcing it, it's gonna be something relevant. But the way that those three bosses are designed makes them very different compared to the dungeon and Doom Tower bosses and so on. All of those old ones... Wait, he has so much CC. I guess we have to go with Dutchess to get the Polymorph. I think I fought against him multiple times yesterday, and I think I actually beat him multiple... I think I beat him two times out of three or something like that, which was surprising to me, to be honest. Um, I... Yeah, let's see what he does, but I'm kind of afraid that he's gonna pick UDK, but he has so many choices, he's not even gonna go with UDK. 
I need to get the claims against the Galatir and everything, but the difference between those three bosses and basically all of the old ones, I would say Hydra kind of falls in the same category as those three bad bosses, let's say, that the mechanics are kind of um, not well defined. Like, let's say something like um, basically any Doom Tower boss, let's say Magma Dragon, and it's not like some of the Doom Tower bosses aren't hard, like Bommal and Dark Fae are especially hard. Or even, even um, what is that called? The Scarab one? That, that one can be very hard as well. I think I'm gonna go with Wukong and ban the Arima. But yeah, it's not like Doom Tower bosses can't be hard. But they have very specific mechanics, and if you follow them, you can definitely beat the bosses. Even you don't need any specific champion, but let's say that you need to taunt the Magma Dragon and you need to reduce the turn meter of Dark Fae and so on. But there's very specific mechanics, and if you follow them, you can beat them. You don't need to have ultra endgame guard account. You, you can like you can do Dark Fae with army girls and so on, if you put your mind onto it and just build the right team on the boss but those three new ones um even if you follow the mechanics they are so hard that you really can't easily beat them and you pretty much need very few specific champions to be able to do it and you don't even follow the mechanics you just cheese them because the mechanics are not not, not good enough to use to actually beat them like nobody is using Rick Tree speed on iron twins i don't think Probably most people watching this video don't even remember the fact that you're basically supposed to put decrease speed on Iron Twins. If you do that, it doesn't gain any turn meter from... Okay, everybody's locked out, but we're still good. You, he doesn't gain any turn meter if you put boss on yourself. But the issue is that um, the damage still ramps up over time, and he doesn't take a lot of damage with his massive defense and... If you deal too much damage, he removes the decrease speed. And it's not actually worth using buffs and decrease speed to kill the boss. The only way really to consistently, safely with 100% win rate to farm it is just um, you need unkillable. That, that's it. You can't, you can't build a tanky team. You can't follow the boss mechanics and put decrease speed on it. It's not reliable. If you have very good team, you can do it, but it's not 100% win rate, and only way to really do it is with unkillable. And it's the same with all of those three bosses, and kind of with Hydra as well. Without getting too much, <laughs> too much into it. This is pretty hard fight. We're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of primals in, not just live arena actually, but in classic arena in the last few weeks. The old, um, yeah, he has double reviver with the lockout. It's kind of hard to... Even if we kill the CV, it's not enough. But the old champions are kind of getting phased out. Yeah, we're already locked out again. So there's basically nothing that we can do against this. I even brought my cleanse, but I guess it wasn't good enough. She's getting locked out as well, and... I got unlucky and he boss stripped the, um, the the stone skin at the start. I wish the Narsus actually died there because I could have revived him and gotten a turn, but I wouldn't even been able to one shot his team with the uh, Narsus there. But yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, we lost. But I think I actually did beat him a couple times yesterday. As you can see, I got. Pretty high points, considering that I was very inactive for the past couple of weeks and so on. But I'm super excited about the, the rework on those three bosses. I don't think, I mean, most endgame players can do it. I mean, well, all endgame players can do it, but it's not going to be fast. It's going to be real pain and struggle and so on. You're going to have to do like five minute fights on Sand Devil like me and that kind of stuff. But, especially, maybe Sand Devil and Shogun are a bit more 
super endgame oriented, but especially something like... Let's just go with the Dutchess early on, because he's gonna use the Primals, but... Especially something like Iron Twins, it really shouldn't be gatekept to the, <laughs> to the top 100 Platinum players. It should be doable by most people in the game. And I don't even mean people that have played the game for like 3 plus years. I think if you played the game for like 6 months, it's about time, even less than that. You should be able to farm Iron Twins and progress on it. Because it's literally gonna take you like, if you can beat it every day, it's gonna take you like 8 months to get one champion at 6 star blessing. And you you might have to play the game for like 2-3 years before you're you're able to do those bosses. I don't think that's really a good design to be honest. Okay, so we're facing with the Galatir every time, who is definitely the best champion in the game right now. I guess we're gonna go with the UDK this time, yeah. I mean, he, he has Harima, so he could just go with that. I hope he doesn't, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna do it. It's kind of um, hard to deal with a account like this, because he just, I'm mean, checkmated every fight by the Galatir. It's both like a lockout and like buff stripper and reviver and basically it's kind of like warlord but it also does the role of Sifi. and what can you do against that you you can't even lock him out no not that i have a lockout myself but there really isn't uh, any ways to counter it apart from polymorph and that's not really even a counter but it's like a rng check against it but i don't have enough polymorph even though it might seem looking at my team that I actually have a lot of Polymorph, but these are literally my all my best champions with Polymorph, and I specifically picked them because of this, but even out of these three, only Duchess has 6-star blessing. UDK doesn't really proc the Polymorph because he he's not gonna have enough accuracy against his team with 75 resistance from the blessing and empowerment and so on. Armands might be able to do it, of course, because he's built with accuracy, but he's gonna ban that one anyway. Wait, what else did we get last week? There was a bunch of things I'm gonna forget. I was supposed to make a video about the... Uh, the... Um... Nice, we can actually ban the Kalatru this time. About the rework on those three bosses, but I didn't. But it was a very interesting topic. I'm, I'm super excited about it, even though it, it might seem like it wouldn't be relevant to me. But I think it's just good for the game overall, and I hope they do a lot more updates like this. No, not not just making the game easier, but revisiting some old content. It could also be like adding new stuff to, let's say live arena or tag team arena not just making things easier but i think they definitely should should go back to old content a bit more and not just not just pump out new ones okay let's see if we can beat ziggy in the rematch wait okay yesterday so yeah by the way the technical issue is that i just turned off my recording yesterday when i was uh I had some bloopers at the start and I was gonna like put the re recording re-record. I was stopping it and putting it putting it back up, but for some reason it didn't go back up and <laughs> I wasn't recording at all, but okay, we're good. There was also some e interesting stuff on Reddit <laughs> that I was looking on the last video, but I think I'll make a separate video about it tomorrow. I I have some opinions about that. It was a ready thread regarding like taking the, the quitting the game or taking a break, and I definitely have some personal experiences on that, and I I want to talk about. Okay, let's see if we can do enough damage. Yesterday, even though I was doing very well, I was having this issue that since I I have my Rotos now in four piece stone skin and not two piece scroll, yeah, if I don't proc the Helm Smasher, the A3. Damage is very unimpressive like it was there, and 
I was getting very unlucky with the Helm Smasher box. I would much rather it be 100% with uh, 50% reduced effect, but actually, I think this might have played out well for us. Ah, okay, never mind. Because the CV was low, and the Wukong would have just one-shot his entire team, but we proc Swift Barry, so that, that was kind of unlucky. But we basically, we lost two coin tosses in row. Okay, yeah, that's super unlucky. We lost two coin tosses in row. Rotos didn't proc Helm Smasher, which 100% guaranteed would have killed the Sifi. It would have done like double the damage. And and he also, she proc the Swift Parry against Wukong. If either one of those didn't happen, I would have won the fight. But that's kind of unfortunate because this matchup was definitely actually very good for me and I if we if we run that same same setup like 10 times I think I'm gonna beat it like eight times out of ten but we, we got we got unlucky in that fight I mean it's a it's a good account but that draft that he did actually was uh was not too bad for me at all ah my hair is kind of weird I just when I do, when I do the videos in the morning, I often come from shower before it. I'm pretty sure there was something else also that. I talked about on the yesterday's video, but I, I already forgot about it. Also, I was supposed to do a video with Suisi on the weekend, and it didn't happen. I think it's. I'll try to make it happen happen later this week, but um. Anyway, shout out to Suisi. I don't think we're gonna meet him today on the live arena session, but I'm probably gonna make a video, or maybe two videos with him later this week, so tune in for that. Also, I'm gonna do more AFK journey videos. I'm not really trying to like shield for it on every live arena video, but um, I will definitely do more on that one. <laughs> I'm still playing AFK journey very actively. Let me actually pull it out. Okay, one thing I hate. This game has some, like, one really annoying bug. I think I may have talked about it, or maybe not, but you can't resize the game client. The only way that you can do it is from, like, in-game setting. But it has, like, a fixed size. And it has this stupid bug that, um... If I... If I have the client on my second screen, yeah, now you can see it went to the correct size, but if I have the client on my second screen, it's gonna go too big and I can't access the in-game UI, I can't change the size and I basically have to reopen the game and it makes it annoying because it's a good game as a side game on second screen when doing other stuff, but anyway. It's a lot less uh, less effort to play than raid. You got your daily stuff, and there's not five years of accumulation of different content, so you can get that stuff done pretty early, uh, pretty easily. Especially when, or like not especially, but despite the fact that the game is early on, and just like in raid, you got a lot of progression to do when you're new to the game. But even with all of that, it's <laughs> it's a lot less effort than raid. And I'm on to a really good start in that game. I have mentioned it before, but uh, in AFK Journey, a lot of the rewards are tied to... But basically all of the rewards are like, a, everything is a competition. Everything is a competition among the players on your server. And if you can at least get, um, is it top 100? Let me double check. Where can you see it? Yeah, if you can at least get to top 100, then you 
get good rewards, but I'm usually either in top 20 or top 50, so I'm getting the really, really good rewards, better than some, some whales, to be honest, so... Okay, why are we not getting any... Is the game just bugging out? Why is it processing some results when... I was just trying to queue battles? <laughs> Goddamn Plarium. I can blame only myself for yesterday's recording getting... Wait, are we... Ah, <sighs> 3 zero start and yesterday was going so well. I really wish we would have won the last one and not gotten so unlucky. Do I have to restart the game? I don't think restarting the game will fix it, but let's give it a go. I'm not really super excited for the Wild Keeper champion, but I am kind of excited if we get those events more in the future. Oh, I guess we got the new shiny... What are these even called? Brisp Souls? What are they called? Brisp... Oh yeah, Brisp Soul Stones, yeah. I mean, everybody knows about it, that the Brisp Shards are basically... It's basically like a gatchup mechanic. Where can you even see? Oh, I guess you can see them. They are basically like a gatchup mechanic to spenders. And they are better than normal shards, so... Wait, did I get the loss even though I... Yeah. Okay, nice. So the Plarium client is just bugging out. I didn't even get into that battle. I definitely didn't crash or anything. It was just stuck in the queue and I guess... He got into the fight and I got the loss. That actually happened one yes once yesterday to me as well. This is a new bug that I haven't encountered before, but... Now two times in two days. But yeah, the Brisbane shards are good. You definitely should get them if you are into that. But uh, if you don't get them, it's not like you're gonna accumulate them a lot without... Uh, they're basically only cash shop items. You can get like one or two from events, but that's it. And that's probably mostly to entice players to buy it. Okay, Harima and Armans. Do I have to go with... I think I have to go with UDK and Rotos. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with the UDK and Rotos, but... Th this actually almost seems like a worse, worse matchup than the last one, so... Chances are that I'm not gonna do too well. Actually, maybe not. Should I... Nah, I'm almost tempted to ban the Harima, but nah, we're gonna go for the Arman's ban still. But uh, Ronda isn't actually too bad since I have the 4P stone skin on Rotos. I am super, super stoked about the fact that I was lucky enough to get the accessory, the, the banner on him, and I have a super sick Rotos set, but... Even though Rotos is so good, he's kind of not good enough to hard carry me anymore nowadays. Nowadays the hard carries is something like... Even Tar Taras is slightly out of the fashion, it's something like Harima or um, Galatir or Krixia. I mean, Taras is good, don't get me wrong, but uh, there are definitely these other toys nowadays on the menu as well. I don't think I can kill the Rondo with A3. E even though Rondo is so squeezy. Should I almost try? No, no let's just go for it. Yeah. I don't think the A2 is gonna kill it, but let's do it, yeah.
Oh, nice. Okay. That, that's basically battle over right there. It, it's a night and day. I mentioned this before, but um, Harima passive is more impactful on a champion like Rotos than you would think. Our damage is getting reduced by more than 80%. Actually, okay, never mind. <laughs> he got rid of the polymorph. I got unlucky there. I would have done like 250k plus on the Sifi with A3 now, but if I do it now, it's gonna be like 30k and not worth using against her, but let's get the Ronda kill and A2 on Sifi. Okay, never mind. A2 was good enough. It was very squeezy Sifi and she didn't have defense buff up, but the A2 actually does more damage in this situation than the A3, so... Okay, we'll, we won this anyway. It kind of seemed rough on the lobby, but it actually it was super easy. I, I I wish I would have won the Tiki fight though, because that honestly was that was better matchup for me on paper than this one. E even though he obviously has better champions than this guy, but that draft wasn't bad at all to me. I I have too much PTSD from Harima. She just hard counters me so hard, but it's. It's also true, it's not... I mean, I'm of course biased against her, but... Um, she is that big deal that... I will struggle more against Harima team than much better accounts if they, if they don't pick Harima. Like, that account has everything with 6-star blessing, and I think most of them were... I think the Necret and Sifi were both plus 4. I think most of his champions are. But that really was less, uh, that was still less threatening than the, than the team with Harima. We just, we got super unlucky in that fight. Well, I mean, okay, well, I'm, I'm not a mad guy. Well, I'm, that must be like super simple, Matt. What is the, what is the chance of losing two coin losses in a row? I mean, it's not like it's a, it's a, like a lottery lottery chance, but it's still, um, we still got unlucky. Anyway, let's get on a win streak right now. Let me show you if some people didn't see the other video that I made about Rotos, right? I want to brag about my shiny Rotos build. Yeah, that, that I showed my email there, but you, you're gonna see it anyway from YouTube, so I, I don't care. I have that trillion emails anyway, so it's it's one of many that I use. Anyway, th this is the build. It's I'm super super uh, happy about that. We we got the super super sick one. Insane banner, like a quad stone skin banner to complete the four piece stone skin set. And we also got some interesting things here that make it even better than, like, make it extra super good. The, the, the only piece here that could be, like, a better would be the, the, the gloves. But it's almost, it, it's kind of hard to get better gloves on here because um, if we have, like, percentage, percentage attack instead of the flat HP, that would be slightly better. But it wouldn't even be that much better. Flat HP is very good on Rotos. And we still have like crit damage gloves with four good stats. And it's kind of impossible to get. I mean on the other pieces we generally need uh, three. Well, three or four. But on something like helmet you don't need to get the main stats right. So it's much harder to get good gloves like this one. We even have the weapon without crit rate. Which might... I remember when I got these this weapon i posted about it on my channel and some people were saying like that's not that good weapon and some people in the comments like got it but this is actually like basically the best possible weapon that you can get on rotos because um you can't glue grit trace but we can glue attack and hp meaning that if you can do a build like this on rotos without grit rate subset it could be on other pieces as well but if you can do it without crit trade, it's actually like very good. I mean, this, this is better than than like on the helmet, which we, we could have a percentage HP as well 
instead of um, crit rate. If we had a lot of crit rate on other stuff, but um, this makes it super good. I really don't think anybody has has a better build. Of course, I still need to chaos dust it, and um, it's not empowered. But I truly don't think anybody has better one. I've seen a few people say that they have a good or better one, but nobody has posted any pictures. So send them on on my way, and we can we can we can compare compare it. I made the super clickbait title kind of as a. It was, I mean, it was clickbait, of course. Don't get me wrong, but it was kind of homage to the to the raid content creator guards of past, like Macchan, because it used to be a big meme that he he made a video saying he has the world's strongest rotos, and it caused a big uproar in the community. So I, I wanted to I wanted to add on to that. But yeah, we're pretty much gonna open the draft. I mean, this is very personal to my account and to the enemies that I fight, so it depends what you have. But I mentioned this many times before, but I really wouldn't pick the Atsis. If I had Polymorph, 6 star Polymorph on my Ankara, I probably wouldn't use the Atsis. I definitely wouldn't use the Atsis as much as I do. But I'm mostly picking her just to have the Polymorph because. There is so much stuff in the meta with debuffs, like ev everybody that he picked has a debuff. And then there's also Grixia and Galhatir and many other very common ones, Mikage. You pretty much need to have it, and I always go for the Norses first instead of Rotos. Not because... Uh, I would say generally, if you do a blind matchup, Rotos is going to be better than Narsus. But Narsus is better a blind pick because they are going to pick to counter against me, and it's just much safer to go with early Narsus. And because I don't have other champions that are are able to deal with Harima as well that he does. I think we're still going to go with Rotos, to be honest. Even against the Harima team. I don't think that's a new Wukong, but I, I hope it is. I don't think... Would he get 6 star blessing on a new build? Well, unless he pulled the... Wait, it, it might be a new build. Maybe he just pulled the 6 star soul off the bat and didn't buy it with tokens. Yeah, I guess it's a new build, yeah. I mean, if you have a lot of tokens, you can do it, but of course I would rather go go for Harima first than many other ones. But since Plarium is doing these kind of revisits to old content, I have bested them about it before, but maybe I should try to do it again. But I hope we get those new... Um, additions to live arena like tournaments or really anything it would be super cool to have tournaments or brackets or some kind of live arena events like the like you can see here the battle rules i remember i talked about it like the day live arena was released that i think they are gonna make like some kind of seasonal formats that you can use only epics or undeads or whatever that's kind of what um, like, why would they even add the battle rules there? Because th there basically is no rules, unless there's gonna be seasonal rules, but they never did it. They haven't hinted about planning to do something like that, so... I, d I don't know. I hope they do, though. But <laughs> they, they don't give us that kind of leaks. Like, you, if we ask what are the upcoming updates, they are not gonna tell us, but they will tell us, like, the same day that they release it so that um, we can be their like propaganda department like when they announce an update they usually like give us that stuff like 30 minutes before they publish their own video or something like that and they want to like synchronize so that everybody's chilling for them at the same time and 
pushing the algorithm in the like in the Google and whatever. And of course, like we know the game, but it's still you know they are giving bread breadcrumbs to content creators, so you can't really blame them for like taking up on the offer. I don't personally usually I mean I don't do videos about uh, when there's like charred event or something like that. I don't do videos about them, but if we got new champions or something like that, then sometimes I do, even though I should do more videos about that. Often I I haven't made videos about them, but the, it's basically Plarium like um, enticing content creators to do specific uh, specific videos they want. I can actually, I'm pretty sure you can talk about it. I have seen other people talk about it, but I can tell you from content creator's perspective. I mean, not that I'm like a massive content creator, but I've had some deals with other games. I have done some sponsored videos and I have had some, uh, I don't know what you even call them. But for instance, in AFK Journey, they kind of have a similar content creator program like in Raid, but they actually give you, um, like in Raid, they have an update and they make a video about it or they, they tell us they ask to make a video about it or they give us the information like 30 minutes before. But for instance, AFK Journey does it and some other games just, you know, pay you to make videos. But AFK Journey, for instance, um, when they have some update or stuff, they tell in the content creator channel that um, here is a topic. We want people to make videos about it. If you make video about this topic, and this is just like an open offer to all content creators. We will uh, pay you money and gems based on the amount of views that you get. And of course, Plarium is bigger fish and they they don't have to go for that. And I'm not going to blame them, but other people right now are making <laughs> making better deals to, to content creators than Plarium, let's say. I mean, Plarium is making good deals for for people that don't make raid videos, but some other games are doing it a bit differently. No, not that I'm like complaining, but um, uh, my point was that other games actually give you give you even more sneak peeks than raid does. So, so I don't have any hidden information. The people that actually have information are not content creators. They are not even the player moderators, M maybe some of them, but the actual people that know stuff are the ones that are on the test server, not the content creator test server, but another test server. Those people know, but they are not supposed to talk about it, and only people that actually have like secret intel is people that have leaks directly from Plarium or from the test server, but those, those leaks are a lot more... Uh, tightly gatekept and other stuff and Plarium is pretty conservative releasing any kind of uh, information about their plans. Do, do you guys remember, maybe some people do, but Raid used to have the roadmap. Wait. Oh yeah, I can find it. Oh, that, that picture is like super low quality. I'm pretty sure that's in some... Wait, give me a second. I know the roadmap is in some file folder that we have access to. Oh, okay, found it. It's a pretty prolonged fight, and I definitely need to be scared of the Wukong, but... Um...
I just need like one more chance to nuke and I would be good. So this is getting kind of scary with Wukong, UDK being 50% HP. Wukong could hit me super hard with the A2 at this point. Okay, here we go. So we used to have the roadmap that Barium used to... Um, wait, where do I have it? Okay, there. Okay, ma. Fuck. Okay. Yeah, my my bad. I'm not really like a professional. At okay, here we go. Now you can see it. So we used to have this roadmap, and I feel like early on in the days of Red, Barium used to try to promote their upcoming content a lot more. But nowadays we basically don't find about it. Until until they release it, but we used to have this roadmap. This roadmap was kind of famous that it like this didn't really work the way that it does. It. They they weren't released on the in the order that it was supposed to be. Yeah, let's do it. It wasn't released on the right order, and uh, some of it worked out differently. Like as you can see, Platinum Arena is here, for instance. I think Platinum Arena was released maybe like a year in the raid. It definitely wasn't early on. And I think it wasn't Clan was like Hydra was released way, way, way after Divine Artifacts. Wait, wait, is Divine Artifacts referring to the speed? Divine speed set? I think that might actually be referring to the Forge Passes. I'm not even sure, but. Void Dungeon, is that Doom Tower? I think it was supposed to be Doom Tower back in the days, but then after Doom Tower was released, then then I guess it was the Iron Twins. I think that was referring to the Iron Twins actually, even though people thought it was going to be Doom Tower, or thought that it was the Doom Tower when it was released. But we used to have this roadmap, I wish we could get some sneak peeks about the upcoming... Uh, content again okay my internet is working just fine it's the plarium plarium client being being a jerk again like i had in the other fight okay oh, okay I, I thought it just gave me an instant loss but uh, i guess i missed a couple of turns but i still have a chance to make oh come on and now we just got the loss okay thanks plarium one battle we didn't even get into, and here they just Plarium D dosed us and forced us to lose against that guy. Thanks, Plarium. Very, very cool. I guess that that's what I deserve for like complaining about them, but I'm just keeping it real. I think this roadmap thing was cool, but they just stopped doing stuff like this. I really have no no inside information about the upcoming stuff, and uh, that's a shame, but what can I say? I'll, I'll try to ask today, now that I think about it, I'll try to ask today if there is any plans to do the different battle rules for uh, Live Arena, or any kind of additions to PvP, I, I'll ask about it. Actually, I'll ask about it right now. Might it as well. I guess, uh, yeah, I can't, obviously I can't show the content creator chat on the video, but um, I'll ask about it.
I lo I lost a boss roadmap, and ask can we have a new roadmap? Um, are we just gonna go with the same stuff? He has both UDK and Harima. Do I have to go with like Eva or something? Maybe I'll go with Necret and Eva on this one. And ban the Harima. Maybe, maybe that's the way to deal with this. This team. I, I guess I could have gone for Wukong ban and gone with Helicat, but... With both UDK and Harima in the team, I don't have good, too many ways to deal with that. Okay, he, he went with the Helicat. Nice. We still have to ban the Harim, but there's even Eva with her insane damage, but it's gonna be nothing with the Harim passive up. I don't know, you might hear my keyboard very loud. M my bad. Let me copy that. Wait, why isn't... Uh... I'm getting a little bit distracted, but might might as well do do it right now so I don't forget about it. And maybe I'll have some answer to you you guys later on what the reply from the CMs is if I get one. Okay, I asked, um, could we get a new roadmap and what are the like the long term plans right now for Varium? And I also asked about if we can get those seasonal live arena rules, tournaments or any, any updates on it. But let's see if they, they give me a reply. For sure not during this video, but if I get a reply, I'll definitely talk about it on... Uh, Maybe community post or on the next live arena video, we will see. But yeah, the, this battle looks kind of uh, not good. I don't know if I can if if I can get this done with Eva. Wait, can I kill the Wukong even through UDK? Maybe maybe I can. Okay, nice. Okay, we're already getting some content creators chiming in, so I'm sure other people are interested of this topic other than me. Odd one is already uh, commenting on the roadmap picture. But yeah, that, that's what, what's up. I'm definitely hoping that we will get some some new new stuff in relation to Live Arena or PvP because that I always complain about the meta, but it's definitely very unapproachable right now. And also, maybe... Oh, he surrendered. Maybe not currently, because it just shifted. But... 
for the past year it was super stale. Now there's a little bit change to it, but even bigger ones would would definitely be cool. Or maybe I think right now it's good that we had some changes, but it used to be so that the meta changed every couple of months when we got some new item set or new champions. But right now the top champions are so strong that um, it doesn't change very often. But outside of the champion balance, it just would be cool to have some more updates regarding PvP. I think I fought this guy a bunch of times yesterday. I think I maybe fought him three times and I lost two out of three, if I recall right. Okay, Mika get a Narcissus. That's not the very uh, the most popular combination, but usually it's Mika get with Wukong. Should Alri? Maybe I should just go with UTK and draw those right off the bat. Yeah, let's do it. I have my Narcissus in very fast. 240 speed build, well maybe that's not, it's kind of medium fast, for the ultra end game accounts maybe 240 isn't very fast, it's kind of fast, but not super fast, but um, I'm, maybe I'll just keep the build, sometimes I feel like I don't have enough damage in live arena, but uh, I do like the speed, I don't, I don't know what I should do about it, the gear is pretty cute, I guess I just need to wait for the getting the 4 star blessing, because that's definitely gonna add a crazy amount of damage. I actually got lucky, I got, well, lucky might not be the right way to put it, but I did get um, 4 star, not 4 star, 2 star blessing from the split solo shop yesterday, but that doesn't actually give me any direct upgrade. And I still need to get it two more times, then it will be a massive upgrade. I think we're gonna go with the Angora even without the Narcissus because he has a lot of CC and the cleanse would be welcome, but who do I pick? I guess I'm just gonna go with the double, right? Yeah, we're just gonna go with Wukong. The lock revive from Narcissus might be a bit scary, but I have to be careful about... I shouldn't put both the buffs from, Nar uh, from Angora and UTK up at the same time, because that's gonna add up to, up to 3 and we don't want to get the Wukong block revived. Okay, no lockout. I was expecting to see a lockout. Then we're just gonna ban our base. I think we might be fine in this matchup. I think we're good. I thought it would be way worse than this. Necrot isn't that scary anymore. I mean, I know it's kind of green to say because I have a Necrot. I have plus two Necrot. That's basically half of the Void champions that I have pulled. But yeah, Necrot isn't isn't that relevant in the meta. It's good, but it's... I mean, as you can see, have I even used it once today? I don't think so. It's okay, but it's not a... Uh, like a uh, solution to everything or... to many things at this point. It definitely does add some value to the team, like... you can get the immunity on Nuka and so on. That used to be a big deal when stuff like Hegemon would be meta, but not right now. And there's so many buff strippers too, like Mikage does other things and buff strip, Krixia does other things and buff strip, uh, Galatir, Wukong, there's so many buff strippers that um, you don't pick them for the buff strip, let's say, but they also do have it, and coincidentally it's kind of... Uh, 
he changes the meta. You, you can't rely on the boss like you used to. You need to, you need to rely on going first polymorph and CC, or champions that uh, can't die like Wukong. Yeah, that's the that's the contribution that Necret Necret did to him in this fight. Good job, Necret. You you can rest now. You you have you have done your part for sure. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think I think I was mostly getting. Maybe I recall wrong, but I think I was mostly losing to this guy yesterday. But he just picked the Necrest, the type of team that wasn't wasn't that bad. But yeah, we definitely need some wins because I think I feel like I kind of got uh, screwed over in two battles today. There was this one battle where I just didn't even get. It. Wait, what? No, two battles. Was it two battles? Was I in this battle? At least th this battle I didn't even get into. Oh no, no. Yeah, this battle I didn't get into it at all. I got screwed in three battles today. I didn't get into this lobby at all. This one we got disconnected during the fight and it felt like I was winning. And then this fight I just I got super unlucky. I totally I won the draft, I feel like. I I would I would win this fight eight times out of ten for sure. I no I wouldn't even need polymorph proc. I, even even if I didn't have any polymorph, I would win this fight eight times out of ten. I probably would it, would win it more because I actually do have the dodges with polymorph as well. But yeah, this actually could have been a very, very powerful win streak today. But we're kind of getting shafted, both by Aaron Jesus and Larium being a bit um, throwing a temper tantrum when I'm complaining about stuff. Okay, is that gonna be a new Wukong again? He is getting very popular. I feel like at one time the support field on Wukong was a lot more popular, but now it kind of shifted back to the old ways again. By the way, I don't know, maybe most people didn't even realize it or don't care, but it's kind of triggering me a little bit on the video, but you can see the microphone stand here. I don't know if I actually want to show it to you fully because then I have to move everything, but um, my microphone stand is kind of being silly. It's not strong enough to keep the microphone properly. If I could, there's like, um, yeah, I don't think I can show it. The, um, you're supposed to be able to like bend the different like ligaments of the microphone stand and make them like stay in specific like like you have it like this or you can like bend it to different slots but this part here which you it's just you can't see it on the screen on purpose but this one doesn't like um it's not able to hold the microphone upwards and if it's good then you wouldn't see the microphone but I'm not able to get it properly and uh, and it's kind of coming a little bit on the screen. It's kind of a bummer because it was supposed to be a good microphone stand, but I'm not impressed by this at all. I'd rather not have the microphone or at least this, uh, the cable is visible on the screen, but I don't think that really matters but it looks kind of weird there's no reason to have it visible on the screen but also i've learned from my experience now at this point making a little bit of videos that it just sounds way better if the microphone is close it's not worth having it far i'd rather have it close and you can see the cable than it being far away and you can't see the cable but i could have both of them if this microphone Stand just wasn't a terrible, terrible quality. 
Wait, why didn't I use the... Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I should have just gone for the Wukong and then later on went for the Harima. That was a mistake. Yeah, the, the microphone. Microphone stand is from Logitech, so thanks a lot. Not, not too good. I've had this one for a while, but I kind of had um, some attacks, attachment to the microphone to make it better. And now I could have it a lot better, but sadly my stand is not good enough for it. Yeah, I'm complaining about my irrelevant first world problems and making massive mistakes and losing fights, but happens. I, I should have just re book revived the Wukong. I knew I was gonna like barely miss damage on the Harima. Of course, ideally, I would have just had enough damage to kill the Harima. Then that would have been the correct decision, but I knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, we lost it. It was winnable. I mean, he, he had a good team, don't get, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I could have still still done it. This microphone stand was recommended. I like, why did I even go to retail store? But I really needed a microphone stand at one point because my old one broke. And I didn't have time to wait, wait for one from internet. And then in my local retail store, they told me that this is a really good one and I should buy it. And of course you can buy more expensive ones, ones but it was kind of expensive. It wasn't a cheap one, but I'm not a big fan of this. It's a plastic one. I really should have just bought like a... I guess it's like... Um, yeah. It, it Maybe it has a little bit metal and plastic, but I should have just bought a good metal one from the internet and not gotten scammed by my local retail store. I think I might be able to fix this, but I don't have the, the tools for it. Like, it's not broken or anything. I'm not saying that I can fix it because it's broken, but... Um, you might be able to, like, um, if you had some tools, you probably could alter it a little bit. It's it's kind of hard to explain. I'm not really like a handyman type myself. But. My dad is gonna visit me next weekend, so maybe that's that's a great time to to see if he if he can do it. He's like a well, he's not like a handyman. He's more like a construction uh, like inspector or boss or whatever you call it. But I mean, he he's good with that stuff. So if you can if you can set it up yourself, he can do it. I I don't have any tools anyway. Uh, if I had tools, I would definitely try to do it myself, but I don't even have anything. Kaimar is very uncommon weird pick. I'm kind of, kind of surprised that I'm seeing something like that. It used to be a good combination with Yumeko and see if this used to be like a meta team in Classic Arena, but still. I'm kind of... should I go with Wukong instead? Uh, yeah, let's go with Necret actually. I could have gone for either Rotos or Wukong, but... Let's just go with Rotos and Necret. He still has to pick a second nuker. It's probably gonna be something like Georgid if he has one, maybe Lazarus, but Necrot wouldn't be that good against either one of those. 
What do you need something else? Necrot might be good. Okay, Rhonda can ignore the shields as well, but the uh, ally protection is still good. And of course it's only on the A2, so... But I have the stone skin anyway on Rotos, which I'm sure she didn't expect. I mean, Rhonda is a Rotos counter, specifically because you can one-shot him with A2, which is a multi-hitter that ignores shields and so on. Counters both Rotos and Necrot. But she's not going to be able to do it because of the stone skin. Rhonda used to be pretty popular in classic arena offense at one point, when Rotos was a common champion in defense, but those days are not uh, not any, they are like long time ago. Okay, my yeah, my Jatsis is pretty tanky, like Ronda A2 hits super hard, generally it one shots everything, even something like Taras because it blocks the passive, but my my Jatsis is um is pretty up there in tankiness. It isn't really always enough in the modern meta, but uh, you're not gonna find too many tankier ones than mine. It's maybe a little bit outdated because the bolster can sometimes be a negative thing in the in the Narsus meta, but uh, let me find the build. I think my dots is like 160k HP. I think I'll save the A3 for later. If we can get like more boss on Harima or Ronda. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the UI on the Hellhades website is not the best for the split screen. Okay, we got it. Nice. It, it wasn't the, the worst possible matchup, to be honest. When when he picked the Kaimar, I kind of felt like I was going to win at that point. But this is where we're at. 159k HP. And there's definitely some little bit room to still loop it. And this is without the Platinum Arena bonus. So it would be 160k with the Plat, plat bonus. I mean, as you can see, it's pretty much... Uh, of course, you could get better, you could have like quad rolls or painter rolls with mutix, but it's basically everything has all of the good substats and triple on everything. The, the, the funny part is that the worst piece of item on her build is actually the weapon, which is like the easiest thing to upgrade. So, wait, don't we have, I'm pretty sure we have like Bolster Forge Pass going on right now. I think this is probably going to be the best, the last ever bolster pass I buy. I would say that bolster is a good set, but I already have a pretty good bolster gear. I think I have gotten two forge passes. I don't think I need anything too more than that. It's not like I need 10 different good bolster sets and it's kind of out of the meta because of Narsus A2 anyway. But it shouldn't be too hard to upgrade my Dutch's weapon. I will still go for that. Even though I'm sure, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, how much... Let's say that I get a weapon with triple triple roll on the HP and flat HP subset. Maybe that adds, like, 2,000, 3,000 HP, whatever. Maybe, maybe even a little bit more. Let's say, like, 4,000 HP. But I don't think that's going to be earth-shattering. But I, I'm still gonna go for it anyway, just for my own enjoyment and to complete her build. But it's good for a live arena, but for classic arena, the bolster set is almost detriment in the current meta. That might change at some point, but who knows when that's gonna happen. J just because the Narcissus is so, so popular in offense and gets the double gets the double hit if you have the shield buff up 
but yeah, let me know what you think about it. Am I being dumb that I want to buy more Wolfstar when I already have good enough? But I think I'll get this one. I want to get slightly better weapon. I think if I craft only weapons the entire force pass, surely I'm gonna get better one than this, but we will see about it. I still do want to get the speed substat, so we are gonna need like three out of four as the right ones. Flat HP, percentage HP and speed. But the main stat doesn't matter and we don't need the fourth um fourth substat and I'm only crafting it with weapon charms and HP charms, so surely we're gonna get a good piece. Okay, I'm being, being a bit slow. <laughs> Flexing about my Jarts' build and whatever. I mean, I'm sure nobody really got offended, but if somebody was offended by flexing with the build, that wasn't really my intention. Well, I mean, in a sense, but it wasn't, it wasn't to make somebody feel bad about their gear. I was just talking about my plans with my, with my own builds and gear. I mean, that's the, that's the thing that gets people to play something like Raid or other RPG games for a long time. Even if it doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme of things, and then if you're not even competing for Platinum Arena or whatever is whatever is the equivalent version in that game, or if there is any, but it's all about the progression. And even if there's no particular reason to do it. But yeah, I, I want to complete that Dutch's build, we're gonna get the weapon. I'll make a video about it for sure. Is this the first, first Taras that we see on today? Damn, Taras is really falling out of the season. It's kind of shocking. I'll have to double check the battle logs after this, but I don't think we met any other team with Taras. It's not like Taras is that bad. He's still very good, but no, nobody's speaking Taras at all. And to be honest, out of my main nukers right now, Rotos, Narses, and Wukong, well, at least Rotos and Narcissus, they both kind of have okay matchup against Taras. They kind of counter it, but Taras can easily one-shot Narcissus, so I wouldn't say that it's totally one-sided counter for him. Rotos though definitely is a, like, I would even say that Rotos counters Taras. Not like hard counters, but it's a, it's a soft counter to him. Wait, what? Okay. S somebody was posting some videos in my Discord that with the... And is that the new Primal? Wait, what is this stuff? No, that's not... Uh, okay, never mind. Some random Hydra, Hydra video with... Um, what was the champion's name? It's the High L Spirit Nuker that used to be kind of relevant in classic arena offense at one point. Jannika. Like Jannika doing like 1500 million damage in one nuke or something like that. Wait, why do they have shields uh, anyway? 
Who, who cares about Hydra? Not me. As long as uh, my clan doesn't get too mad about me autoing Hydra, I, I'm good enough with that. So. Okay, nice. We went before the Karas, but I don't think we can. We, we definitely can't one shot him because he doesn't have a shield buff up. But we, I guess we can block revive the Ronda, so let's go for that. Should I then. Yeah, I'll go for that too. The damage is a lot less if you don't get the double hit with shield or strength. Then. That, that's why, like I said, the bolster is a little bit out of the fashion right now. It, I mean, to be fair, kind of like Taras, but bolster said was almost too good until we got the Narcissus release. So I'm not even saying that it's like a bad thing per se, but of course it hurts me a little bit. But I will say bolster was too good set, to be honest. Okay, another point. If we didn't have those, like, two, two losses because of Plarium and one bad RNG loss, we would have had, like, insane session today. I feel like I actually had a super insane session, but I'm getting robbed by Plarium and RNG. If we had, like, three wins more and three less losses, that would be, like, uh... 27 more points we, yeah we will we will be at like yeah we, we will be so high points right now well maybe maybe i can do well next time because yesterday even though the video got screwed but it went well and today we kind of did well so maybe the maybe the next one is gonna go good as well we will see I had like a couple really hard like live arena sessions in a row and now I'm having a couple good ones so I guess the meta shift has kind of benefited me a little bit. Th that's definitely if you care about PvP you definitely need to be like uh, what's the word? What's the word? I'm, is it malleable? I don't think that's precisely what the word that I mean, but you need to be able to go with the flow with the update. So if there's something new, good and strong, you definitely want to use it and you you want to see how you can, uh, what you can use with that new champion or mechanic to make most out of it or slash also how you can uh, abuse other people using it so new updates are always opportunity to get your personal regards in like classic arena and uh, even in live arena it, it's definitely like a opportunity to do better than your account normally can do of course some updates can have like big negative impacts on some accounts but like depending like if your main champion gets directly or indirectly nerfed and so on but overall it's definitely like a giant um, treasure trove of opportunities if you are cringe enough to care about the competitive side of raid pvp which to be fair is not like is not the mainstream thing to do so Okay, Grixia. I haven't seen too many Grixias today, actually. Galartir was way more common, but both of them are kind of equally hard to me. Okay, 
Yeah, let's just go with Ankara. He can't go with UDK anymore anyway. And it, if I ban the Armands, it, it is good to have the Ankara A1 against the lockout. Okay, Ronda and Harima. I want to go with Necrot, but Necrot isn't... Ronda A2 is still gonna kill Druid. I definitely can go with Helicat, both because they have buff strip, but I don't think I'm gonna ban the Grixia anyway. Kind of hard, maybe it's winnable. I think this may come down to RNG. But yeah, I'm. Maybe that maybe that should be the topic of uh, the thumbnail or something, the title of today's video. But I guess Taras meta is dead. It's kind of shocking that we barely have met any teams with Taras today. I think only one. We're we're seeing more Ronda than Taras. I'm not saying that Ronda is better champion than Taras, but that's what we're seeing in practice. Primals have just taken over. The Ukraine duo meta is dead. Okay, I definitely can kill the Ronda right now, even with the Harima passive, but um, should I do it? Yeah, let's go with A3. Ah, so close. It used to be my way to go for the Harima first and then go for the Revivers, but nowadays I guess I'm usually just ignoring the Harima and trying to kill the revivers through the harem pass. Maybe it's because we also haven't seen any Maritska today. There hasn't been a lot of teams with Sifi and Maritska, which used to be very common. So I guess it's a little bit easier to just kill the Sifis if she's the only reviver in the team. But yeah, no Taras, only one team with Taras and no Maritska at all today. Tons of primals, even stuff like Ronda we have seen in many fights. Wait, I actually didn't look Reddit at all today. I did I did look Reddit yesterday on the videos that didn't happen. Kind of too bad because there was some Good threads about good threads on Reddit yesterday, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like talk the same stuff that I did yesterday. It's not gonna be that would be way too cringe. I'm not gonna like follow a script. We're just gonna see what we got. Yeah, to to be honest, the all of my Hydra teams are kind of equally. Okay, not, I don't have like one insane guard Hydra team, but I guess for most people it's the team with. Not most people, but for the ultra endgame players, it's gonna be the team with the double Yumeko and Tranda. Okay, he took both the. Okay, yeah, never mind. This guy knows my account. He took both uh, Rodos and Narcissus, that kind of interesting curveball, but. Um, we're obviously gonna go with the UDK, and I guess we're gonna go with Eva and Bukong. Yeah, let's go with this, see what he picks, but probably gonna go with Eva. I think my Torvin is scared, so it could be an option, maybe Helicat, but probably Eva, I guess.
Oh, that's the first Marisco that we we meet today. Just when I was talking about the fact that nobody has picked Marisco at all. I kind of want to go with the Eva, but uh, is she even gonna get any turns? He's gonna go before me and Eva. Wait, wait. Am I just gonna? I'm sure he's gonna pick lockout, but I think I'm just gonna ban the ban the Narcissus and just struggle through the lockout. I think. Should I go with Mit Mitrala or Angora? Let's just go with Angora. Both of them can kind of be okay against the lockout. That, that's why I'm thinking about them. But I'm like, I'm like seventy percent sure he's gonna pick some lockout champion, whatever he has. But I'm gonna ban the Narcissus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trying to nerve is definitely not gonna happen. This topic has been discussed in the CC chat. Uh, and Plarium has given multiple times a direct answer to it, and they don't want to nerf it, it's not gonna happen, so... Okay, Helicat can be pretty rough as well, but we're still gonna go through with it and ban the Narcissus. Maybe he's gonna go for the Wukong. Ban? Okay, no, okay. Still Armors. Yeah, we're just gonna have to wait through the Helicat, but might be doable. But yeah... Tr Randa is never going to be nerfed. Barium has said that they don't think it's OP, so that's their final answer. Okay, I guess that's... That's what Reddit has to offer today. I think I might make video about the Reddit thread I saw yesterday. I might make a video about that one tomorrow, where the topic was like quitting raid and taking break. I was I had a long discussion about it on the yesterday's video that didn't that doesn't exist. But I think that that's um, interesting enough title for a separate video, but. I'll re revisit that tomorrow, I think. But yeah, I think is this gonna be... Maybe we can do one or a couple more fights today. Probably not the last one. But he doesn't have Lockout or UDK, as long as we can deal damage. Well, actually, Eva is weak affinity against Rotos, so I kind of forgot about that. But we can just kill the other ones. We can block revive uh, Helicat, and then we can just kill the rest of the team with um, some weak hits. I think it should be okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, not, thank, thank God for the Angora passive for saving us for that sneaky Maritska A1 sleep. Okay, come on. Just give me a turn with my Nukers. I need to kill that Eligat before he gets the block damage back up. Mm, I don't think I can nuke through his team with the massive shield like that and the defense buff. Maybe see if he takes... Okay. See if he took a turn before Wukong. Maybe if I get Halon Smasher proc, maybe, maybe I can kill her. Okay, we got her. But it was barely enough to do it and nothing else. And I guess Helicat is going to get the block damage up now.
and my my Wukong shouldn't have enough accuracy to buff strip it. Damn. Ankora is getting scarily low HP from those ally attacks. She doesn't have like a bolster set or any self heals really, so she isn't that suited for extended fight. I feel like he almost made a mistake. He should have just a one the Ankar there. I think he probably could have killed it. Maybe, maybe not. He probably wouldn't. Yeah, he probably barely missed the damage. Okay, instead. I guess that's it. I don't think I can make a comeback here. Yeah, we, we lost. Yeah, he, it was kind of doable, but it was a pretty hard one, so... M maybe I could have won it, but it wasn't that um, guaranteed win for me. Wait, did we fight against this guy before? Maybe. Anyway, Taras again. W when I said that nobody's speaking Taras and marriage today, Hurt me and started doing it, but um, that's I guess, I guess I'm probably maybe a little bit biased because I'm always first picking Narses, so I mean that definitely makes sense why they aren't picking Taras as much. M maybe I'm kind of using uh, like a pretty like um what's the word? You know when people make arguments not based on like uh, statistics, but they make them based on their like personal experiences. Maybe I'm kind of falling on that uh, that trap a little bit that nobody's using Taras because <laughs> I'm not seeing anybody use Taras because I first speak Narses, so maybe I'm being a bit bit silly because of that. There was this one thing. I guess I'm. I guess I can talk about it, but the, I mean it's totally irrelevant. But there was this funny thing. Do I want to go with this? Yeah, there was this funny incident. Maybe incident isn't the best word. Well, yeah, there there was this funny incident in between my family that um, nobody in my family is super political. I'm probably the most interested of politics out of them, but everybody still votes and talks about the politics during the elections and so on. And my mother was like, we, like both me and my brother live in different cities and basically all of our family lives not close to each other in different parts of Finland, but we have like discord calls and like family like debates and so on. But, um, am I gonna go for the Mika Kipan? No, let's go for the Lazarus. But we we were in a call, I think, in the, yeah, we were in a call about the elections, and I don't know what's the word in English. There is this kind of surveys, there's probably an actual word for it, but these kind of surveys that you do in different elections that ask you about your opinions regarding current current uh, issues on politics and then it kind of gives you uh candidates that most align with your answers of course it's like in actuality it's more complicated than that but based on your answers in that survey it gives you the most um people that gave you the people that are Candidates, it gives you the ones with the closest answers to your. And our mother got like a really, really weird. I like, honestly like I could almost look it up on the video right now, but I'm I am not gonna look look it up. But there was this candidate for the Finnish um, government, like the uh, what's the word? What's Edoskunta in English? I mean, this is a very basic word. Is it parliament? Yeah, parliament. There, there was like a candidate for the seat of parliament. 
that was basically like some kind of like like crazy 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 woman like some 50 year old woman with like a midlife crisis or something but that was the number one candidate that our mother got based on her answers and then we were like reading her description on the like official government uh, election like uh, website or whatever and he was talking about like his uh <laughs> like I i'm not kidding this is like candidate for the parliament but she was talking about her neighbor's um well and some water issues like this is her like description or her speech to like get elected and she's talking about her neighbor's water well and how there's some issue and the local municipality is not doing the water properly or whatever but she was just like blabbering about some random subjective personal issues in her vicinity that are not like and she wasn't like citing any kind of like numbers or statistics and it, it was a big uh it was a big joke Th that's a super random fact though. i don't know if anybody can relate but i'm not really the type of guy usually to nitpick how people make their arguments but if, if you make too much arguments based on your personal experiences it can it can be very uh very funny that that's that's why i was kind of feeling like when I was thinking about the Taras incident that oh no I, I don't want to be that guy that is uh can think think about the big picture and is only seeing things from like your own biased perspective. Okay, I think we're I think we're gonna lose this fight. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's the that's what I took out of that, at least my personal lesson. That um, I think we ah uh, okay, it's fine. Think think the big picture. Don't don't get too caught up on your own personal perspective. I mean, that's the natural way, but. Uh, so sometimes if you can't think about the big big picture you're missing out so anyway Taras is good but maybe I'll make the video video thumbnail about him anyway just for just for the memes to be honest I mean he's definitely a lot less popular than he used to be but probably in the biggest part why we're not seeing Taras on this video why why we saw Ronda more than Taras is because I'm picking Narsus in almost every fight, so... But yeah, honestly, I, I, I didn't do justice to, like, the insanity that the, the parliament candidate was, like, blabbering in her description. If somebody is, like, a Finnish guy and wa wants to know more details, message me in discord i i literally i can find you her post like that um <laughs> what what she told for the election um election description or whatever but it's what it was like the weirdest it, it, it looked like it was some kind of 4chan edited like uh post and it was not like a real thing and it was like a parody post but that was a, like actual candidate for the parliament elections. I, I can't recall her name. I'm I'm certain that she didn't get elected, so I I can't recall that far. And I, I think this this is not even from the last election. This this is from the second last election. So this is like many years ago, but it was so funny that I still remember it. We can't go for the A2, we're just not gonna do any damage. If I can kill the Harimo... Yeah, here, here's the issue that I was talking in the other fight, that if it's just Harimo with Sifi, 
we could just go for the CV. But he has double reviver. Wait, uh, I misclicked. I was supposed to use the A2, not, not the A1, but... Um, it's not gonna be easy, L let's see. I probably should gamble on hitting the Harima in this fight, to be honest, but... It's gonna be pretty hard to kill the Harima and then get the turn on Wukong before Harima gets revived. That's basically what I need for need to happen here, but... Um, Okay, never mind. This is good. I think we can kill both of them. But both of his re ah, both of his revivers revive at full turn meter or high turn meter, so it's pretty hard to cut in with the Wukong A2. But we got rid of the Ankara revive. We c we could just kill the Sifi with Rotos A2 now. So maybe maybe it's okay. My team is still alive. Even though the Justice is in Bolster, so... Yeah, he bar barely doesn't have enough damage with the... Narsus. Okay, never mind. I thought we were good, but that's definitely... It for the fight. Goddamn. Okay, anyway. W we lost that one. I almost thought I could win it, but nah. Still, it was a pretty good session. We had three unlucky unfair fights, then there was multiple fights that were kind of close or my mistake, so this could have been a really good session. It's both my fault and not my fault, but we have potential to do better next time. Even if I'm just pretty much speaking the same team almost on every battle, which kind of feels frustrating to me personally, but there just isn't anything better to do, so I end up going with the same stuff. O of course, this isn't just me, it's the other people as well. It might not be the same champions, but they are, of course, mostly, mostly picking their main team, or the top few champions are getting picked almost every time. Even if it might be different ones and they might have a little bit more diversity than my picks. But ideally, of course, it would be a lot more complex and diverse than it is right now. But that's just the way the meta is. So, uh, I guess we're, yeah, we're just gonna go with Narsus. I could have gone with UDK. I. Totally, like, this would be a good fight to go with UDK and Rotos, so... Those might already be my next two picks if he doesn't pick anything too peculiar. How do you pronounce it? Peculiar? Peculiar? Peculiar. <laughs> I've talked about this before, but... Sometimes people give me crap for my pronunciation and I'm very self-conscious about it as well but um, google how Finnish language sounds I feel like sometimes you guys don't even realize like not to brag but I speak pretty good English for a Finnish person my accent isn't isn't great <laughs> but it could be way worse I my some people don't even realize that I'm Finnish like there has been some people that watched my videos for a long time and they didn't even realize I was Finnish, so... But Finnish accent or Finnish vocabulary and the pronunciation just doesn't really fit well with the English one. Yeah, we're definitely gonna go with Rotos, but I want to get the early dodges for the... out of the debuffs. Okay, let, let's pick that word. Vocabulary. Guess how I pronounce it in Finnish. I, I'll give you a couple of seconds to guess how it would sound. Vocabulary. That, that's how you will say it in Finnish. Or just any random text on the screen. Opponent's turn. Opponent's turn. Your opponent is picking. That's how Finnish person normally sounds. So I'm actually quite okay 
Just saying. It's not really that bad. Sometimes my natural Finnish accent kind of slips in, and some words I just can't do, but um, it could be way worse. Okay. <laughs> the first two weeks weren't that scary, but then he went for like all of the. Like, th this is literally the top three primal champions in the game. I thought it wasn't gonna be that bad fight, but it's actually like a crazy account. Like literally, here, here is the top three primals. You could argue that Seekron could be here, but many people will say that Seekron would be number four. But in either case, this is the cream of the crop. Yeah, I guess we're gonna go for the Galatir ban. I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I maybe I should have just banned one of the new girls since he was already going with double lockout, but nah, no, let's go for the Galatir ban. Also, as you can see from my enemy team, it's like how I was talking about the bolster before. We're not seeing it that much. I mean, there definitely was some battles where the enemy had bolster, but it isn't even every fight. It's actually surprisingly uncommon. And this is a new thing. Just a while ago, before the Narthus, almost every team would have had a bolster champion and many were even running multiple bolsters, like like I was back in those days with both Necret and Datsus. But even Lazarus, for example, he does ignore shields as well, so there's other new counters to it, like a lot of boss troopers, we got Lazarus ignoring shields and even stuff like Helicat and Narsus. What? That A1 did way more damage than I was expecting. 70k. That Krixia doesn't have like any defense at all. What? Usually it's like 20k or 30k damage. 70k. Do I want to even kill the Krixia though? It's just gonna get... Nah, I'll do it anyway. It's just gonna get revived with the cooldowns back, but... Let's do it. At least I'm gonna get the kill streak procs and okay. It got revived by the Lazarus passive. So it doesn't have the cooldowns back, but of course that also means that the Angora Angora revive is still out of cooldown. Okay, come on, it's the last last fight of the video, surely. Yeah, we have to win this one. We're already on overtime. There's no possibility for one more fight. Yeah, th that's the final, final boss battle of the day. We're meeting, we're meeting like a full primal team with all of the top champions. They didn't give me a break for the last one. Wait, does Rotos have the A3? This guy doesn't have Harima on the. Okay, not yet. There's no Harima on the team. Okay, it's over. But yeah, he has double lockout and very scary nukers. But since he didn't kill Rotos at this point, and okay, we can't put that up. But 
Protoss is gonna have the A3 on next turn. I don't think Grixia has the lockout just yet. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> Damn. I would have easily one-shot everybody except Tar Taras, but doesn't matter. His reviver is dead and our team is too tanky for this guy, so... Oh. Second revive from Lazarus passive. I was kind of forgetting that again. But but I, I think we're still good. I don't I don't think he's gonna make a comeback. But having the whale up when you got revived though is pretty strong. Okay, and and the Grixia got the cooldown reset, so okay, we killed it. That, that was kind of close because if Narcissus didn't cut in there, it would have been pretty bad. Would have been another lockout. Yeah, he's still in a five minute battle. He still hasn't gotten to use his A3. But it's over. We're, we're past of that mattering. At this point, we can like A1 his team down as long as we can just survive for a couple turns. I think this guy, I mean, not, not to like get too heated. I was actually talking about that on the <laughs> yesterday's video that doesn't exist, but um, there was a Reddit thread about gear versus um, champions, and I, I had a good point about it. I, I guess I can talk about it right now. I like the TLDR version. I'm not gonna look up the Reddit thread right now, but there was one popping off yesterday about this. I would say I'm kind of on the middle ground I feel like we have this weird, like, it's like a tribal thing that the whales are gonna say that gear masters more than champions, and the free to play players or low spenders are gonna say that you are insane, and the champions are much bigger deal. Obviously, it's somewhere in between, but if I had to choose between having the best champions and mediocre gear, or having mediocre gear and mediocre champions and best gear, I will definitely go with the champions. If you have the top champions with mediocre gear, that's way, way, way better. And to me personally, there's not even like, it's not a debatable, even though people do debate it, but it's kind of greens when both sides go like, basically trying to like, uh, suck themselves off or like try, <laughs> trying to like, um, What's the word in English? In in Finglish, in in Finglish, in Finnish it's called pateminen. But when somebody is just trying to be smart or cool or whatever you want to say it, but they're just trying to bolster your own perspective. But yeah, it, either one. Like the whales are saying that it's all about the gear and champions don't matter. Delusional. But on the other way, it's not. It's too. It's kind of delusional. It's not delusional, it's more like cringe, but both matter, but definitely you much rather have the best champions with mediocre gear than god gear and mediocre champions. The difference between having triples or guards on your gear, it's there, but it it's not that noticeable. Having Hel Helm Smasher proc or not is much more noticeable than having a couple extra, extra damage rolls on your items, but having Galatir or having, I don't know, Arbiter, not, not having Galatir or having it, that's like earth-shattering difference. But sure, if you have Galatir with 20k HP and somebody has like 120k HP Arbiter with more speed, there is limits to it, but yeah, th th that's my that's my uh, take on that that stupid debate. It's super cringe debate. It keeps coming back up and people keep bringing it up. But I, I'm so over that debate. But yeah, in this battle, we did prepare over his champions. I guess he could have a little bit better gear. He definitely had worse gear than some of the other god accounts that we fought today. But he happened to have the three. Three best primals, so he got pretty lucky there. Even though his team isn't 
empowered and he doesn't have six star blessing on everything so he's clearly not the biggest whale in the game at all but he just happened to got very precise primal pulls i wish that was me but anyway yeah th th that's it for today's video i haven't had any like sp specific significant progress recently but the uh, accumulation of gear and stuff has definitely paid off and all of the new champions like armands and so on so i'm definitely doing doing a little bit better than i used to and the the stone skin rotos build is super sick i'm still super ecstatic about it but yeah that's it for today there wasn't a lot of videos in the last week or even last two weeks i'm gonna try to change that not that not like um not like anybody's asking but there will be more videos stay tuned for that more afk journey as well make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel i have this issue that i hardly have any growth on my channel even though i do get surprisingly high amount of views compared to my subs so i'm begging for subs please sub to my channel chill for my channel in your clan discord if you think they might be interested but that's it for for today thanks a lot for watching and see ya